HybridPhoto.pro recommends the fine lighting products from Draycast. Hi, Joe Smoothberger for HybridPhoto.pro. As you may have seen in my previous post, I've been pretty happy with the Draycast lights I purchased a few months ago. The Draycast is now on our recommended list, so if you're shopping for lights, you should at least take a look at www.draycast.com to see what they have. I've tested most of their product line, and I think the quality and the consistency is really great. So the question now is, why would you look at LED panels like this at all for your hybrid photography? Now, compared to some of the fluorescent fixtures, they're more expensive, and they also have a different form factor than what we're used to working with. They don't fit the light modifiers that we use with our strobe lights, but they have some real nice advantages. First, they can be battery powered. Now, two of my panels have these V-mount battery plates, so we can use them without any cords altogether. They come out of the case just ready to go. Panels like this also work great with inverters like the Paul Buff Vagabond and the Photogenic Ion because they don't draw too much power. Now the small units, like this on-camera one, can work with these small Sony batteries and inexpensive battery packs that are really readily available online. LED panels like this are also durable. Their housings are either made of metal are hard plastic and the bulbs themselves are inset and they're protected somewhat by this bezel around the outside. Now many of them ship to you with a case of some kind and they travel really well. Square panels like this are also easy to gel. I know most of you are not used to the idea of color correcting your lights but as you begin to work with continuous sources I think you'll find that it makes sense to match the ambient light and build up your lighting on top of that rather than try to completely overpower the natural light. In the studio, of course, that's not an issue, but on location, I'm a big fan of this approach. Now, except for this small light, most of my panels are daylight balanced. So, like all the other one by one panels, they have a slot in the top that you can drop in gel material or diffusion. For each light, I usually carry an eighth, a quarter, a half, and a full CTO gel, that's color temperature orange, to change them from daylight towards tungsten. I also have a few pale green ones to put on when I'm working with fluorescent lights or I'm near big plate glass windows. Some light manufacturers make filter sets. You can also buy kits of 12 by 12 inch gels already made. Or you can do what I do and just buy the 20 by 24 sheets and cut them to fit your lights. Now panels like this are also available in bicolor versions. That means they have a control to adjust the color temperature. There's a dimmer and then a temperature control. We can switch it from daylight to tungsten just by turning this knob. Now, if I were using more lights like this, I wouldn't need to carry quite so many gels. Now, another thing, LEDs can be used without the big light modifiers. They might seem a little harsh when you're looking right into them, but the light falling on your subject is pretty soft. Now, in situations like this, where there's a fair amount of ambient light in the room, and the panel is used as a key or an accent light, you can just use it bare or with just a little diffusion on the panel itself. This makes for a really portable solution when you're doing lots of different setups in a short time. And the majority of my day-to-day -day work is commercial and editorial still photography. I'm ramping up the hybrid work, but that's still a small percentage of what I'm shooting today. However, I am shooting with continuous light for a lot of that regular work. On every location shoot, I usually carry at least one good size panel and a couple of these little battery powered guys, in addition to my flash units. Now, if I know the situation really well, I might only just bring the LEDs. Now, a situation like that is when I shoot for Kent State University's theater department in their Stark campus. I've been doing headshots and promotional images for them for a long time, and I know the lay of the land pretty well. Usually we have about an hour to do headshots at the side of the stage for between 5 and 25 actors and stage crew. And then we'll set up some situations on the stage with the actors to use in promoting the show. The stage is lit from above with tungsten lights and we don't have a lot of time for light changes. Now for these headshots, I used two of my Draycast panels with full CTO gels so that they would match the tungsten on the stage. That way I could just use the spill from the stage as my fill light. I put this diffusion silk in front of the key light for a softer look. Now this is a Shamira half grid fabric panel that can be used with one of their frames. But I've just been clamping it to a reflector arm like this. It packs up really small and it's easy to move around. 
I just picked a mark on the floor for the actors to stand, set the camera on motor drive, and just kind of crank through them all. I shot between 6 and 15 frames for each subject, and I still had plenty of time for the promo shots. Now for those, I dropped the diffusion screen and moved out onto the main stage. Now here the panels were set up as a key light and a kick light, and they were adjusted a little bit for every time we moved the actors. The overhead stage lights just provided the rest. So as you can see, continuous lights aren't just for video anymore. Thanks for watching. Hybridphoto.pro recommends the fine lighting products from Draycast.